Alright, if you guys could please turn to Unit 2, Functions and Their Graphs. I've already filled out the first row for you guys. Alright, function. Um, let x and y be two non-empty sets. Of a function from x into y is a relation that associates each element of x with exactly one element of y. And I've drawn a little diagram here. So, every element in the domain um, has uh, is associated with every with an element in the range. Notice that two x values can have the same y value, but you cannot have two y values with the same x value. Okay, the domain would be the x values, and the range would be the y values. Um, the graph of a function cannot contain two points with the same x-coordinate and different y-coordinates. So we have something called the vertical line test. The vertical line test basically states that a set of points in the xy-plane is the graph of a function if and only if every vertical line intersects the graph at at, at most one point. So, for example, this is the cube root of x every vertical line that I draw through the graph only intersects the graph once. So this would be the function, uh, or the graph of a function. Let me write that down. Okay. If it intersects more than once, it's not a function. So this would be the equation of a circle centered on the origin, if, and this is not a function. If you are trying to find the domain of a function, this is these are good rules of fun, uh, rules of thumb to follow. Um, generally, you're going to want to start with the domain of all real numbers. If the equation has a denominator, let me box this actually. If the equation has a denominator, exclude any numbers that give a zero in the denominator. Usually if the equation has a denominator, I will take the denominator and set it equal to zero in order to find what x has to equal to make the denominator zero. If the equation has a radical of even index, so a square root, a fourth root, a sixth root, anything with an even index, exclude any numbers that cause the expression inside the radical to be negative. So if there's a radical in the expression, usually what I will do is I will take whatever's inside the radical and set it greater than or equal to zero. Okay, and that will give me what x has to be in order to make sure the, the, uh, the expression inside the radical is positive. I feel that these are pretty self-explanatory. You can add two functions together, subtract two functions from each other, multiply two functions or divide two functions. We, as we learned before, um, a function f is even if and only if whenever the point xy is on the graph, then the point negative xy is also on the graph. Okay, so basically if you plug in negative x into the equation, you're going to get the exact same equation. Even functions are symmetric with respect to the y-axis. A function is odd if and only if whenever the point x, y is on the graph of f, then the point negative x, negative y is also on the graph. Okay, so basically if you plug in negative x into the function, you're going to get negative f of x. Um, also keep in mind, odd functions are symmetric with respect to the origin. Frequently, when you are given a graph of a function, if you look from left to right along the graph, you will notice that parts of the graph are rising, parts are falling, and parts are horizontal. In such cases, the graph is described as increasing, decreasing, or constant. If it's going up from left to right, that means as x gets bigger, y also gets bigger, then it's increasing. If it's going down from left to right, that is, as x gets bigger, y is getting smaller, it's decreasing. If as x is getting bigger, y stays the same, it looks like a horizontal line, it's constant. Okay? Um, when the graph of a function is increasing uh, to the left of x equals c, 
and decreasing to the right of x equals c, then at c, the value of f is largest. This value is called a local maximum. Maxima is the plural of maximum. When the graph of a function is decreasing to the left of x equals c and is increasing to the right of x equals c, then at c, the value of f is the smallest. This value is called the local minimum. Once again, minima is plural of minimum. An absolute maximum or an absolute minimum are the highest or lowest values, or I'm sorry, the highest and lowest y values on a given interval, respectively. Um, sometimes the absolute maximum and the local maximum are the same, sometimes they're not, okay? The extreme value theorem states that if f is continuous on a closed interval a, b, then f has an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum on the interval a, b. If you are trying to find the absolute maximum or minimum, what you want to do is you want to identify the local maxima and minima, and you want to look at the endpoints, a and b. Of these points, the highest y value is going to be the absolute maximum, and the lowest y value is going to be the absolute minimum. Sorry about that. The average rate of change um, between two points on a graph can be found with the following equation. You guys will probably notice that this equation looks an awful lot like the equation to find the slope of a line. That's because um, the average rate of change of a function uh, is essentially the slope of the secant line containing these two points. If you guys remember from geometry, a secant line um, intersects a graph twice. So actually that's what, exactly what this theorem says. The average rate of change of a function from a to b equals the slope, where's my cursor, the slope of the secant line containing the points a, f of a, and b, f of a, I'm sorry, b, f of b on its graph. Here I have listed a summary of graphing techniques, and you guys might be, hopefully are familiar with at least some of this information. Um, we will be doing some graphing activities in class, so I'd like you guys to copy this down for now. Um, if you add a number to a function, the function is going to move up. If you subtract, it's going to move down. If you add a number to a function inside the parentheses, it's going to move to the left. If you subtract, it's going to move to the right. If you multiply a function by a number, it's going to stretch vertically. And if you divide, it's going to compress vertically. If you multiply the x by a number, it's going to stretch horizontally. And if you divide the x by a number, it's going to compress. Oops, you know what? Mistake here. Sorry. This should say horizontal. Where's my pen? Give me a sec. Okay, if you make a function negative, it will reflect about the x-axis. If you make the x variable negative, it will reflect about the y-axis. And once again, we will be doing some activities with this stuff in class.